This week in IT, Microsoft announces Copilot Chat and Pair As You Go agents. Microsoft Teams and Outlook are getting a unified contact experience. And Patch Tuesday updates cause problems for some Citrix users. So stay tuned to find out all the latest. Hello and welcome to This Week in IT, the show where I talk about everything connected to Azure, Microsoft 365 and Windows. But before we get started today, I've got a quick favour to ask you. Now, you probably know that I don't handle fame very well, so whatever you do, please don't subscribe, don't like this video, don't subscribe to the channel because it's starting to get really popular and to be honest, I'm getting noticed on the streets and I can't afford to check into the Betty Ford Clinic. So just asking you to do that one thing for me. This week's main story is Microsoft Copilot Chat. Now, we all know that Microsoft loves to create these words and terms for its products that don't make a huge amount of sense. Well, if you take it completely out of any context, I guess, okay, Copilot Chat. But, you know, I had to scratch my head a little bit when I first read the headline. Doesn't Copilot already have chat? What is this all about? So, Microsoft are announcing this new feature called Copilot Chat. And this is really primarily for, I guess, any commercial customer that has a Microsoft Entra ID and some kind of subscription, as far as I understand, a Microsoft 365, but doesn't necessarily have a Microsoft 365 Copilot license. So what this will enable users to do, it will give them the option to chat with Copilot, but it'll be web-grounded chat. It will give them the option to interact using natural language with Copilot agents and Microsoft is also providing controls for IT so that they get enterprise grade security, privacy, compliance, management, all those kind of controls over this new feature. Now, as far as I can understand, this is really designed to encourage AI adoption in the enterprise and to give users the access to these very basic tools, as I said, even if there's not a full Copilot license for the user, and they'll be able to start working with Copilot and use these agents and as far as I understood also create their own agents using natural language as well. Now Copilot Chat will also be available to Copilot 365 license subscribers as well should they wish to use it but if you have a full Copilot license then obviously you have access to a whole load more features. So I would consider this more like a ramp-on service for AI, if you like. It's also going to allow organizations to deploy specialized AI agents for uh, customer-facing things, you know, like customer service or uh, for field technicians, you'll be able to access it from mobile as well. And with Copilot Chat, Microsoft is giving organizations access to Copilot agents on a pay-as-you-go consumption basis, if you like. So if you don't create any agents, if you don't use any agents, you haven't got to pay anything. But if you use them a little bit, you pay a little bit. If you use them a lot, you pay you know, more, obviously. So this is a, a new model, if you like, so that organizations can get access to these agents. And of course, it helps to make Copilot more accessible because the Copilot license, the Copilot for 365 license, is pretty expensive. Expensive. I think it's what 30 US dollars per user. So that's going to put it out of the reach of some organizations. But this new access model essentially helps organizations that might have otherwise not really been able to consider Copilot a way in uh, to at least start experimenting with this technology. And in case it wasn't clear, when I said that the Microsoft chat chat, if you like, is web grounded. What that means is it can use information that's freely available on the internet to answer your queries. It doesn't know anything about what's in your work tenant because this is really intended, as I said, as just a ramp on service to give you a, a taster of what's possible. Although you can upload individual documents, as I understood, to give it manually a little bit more context to help provide you with an answer. Of course, Copilot uh, for 365, if you've got that full license, it's work grounded. So the difference there is that it understands and has access to all of the information in your Microsoft 365 tenants. Uh, it can also answer questions from the web as well. 
but it's a completely different kettle of fish, if you like, because it's got a completely different set of data that it's been trained on and it can answer specific questions without you having to upload individual documents and provide it with that context manually necessary. Microsoft also announced this week that Teams and Outlook will be getting a unified contact experience via the People app if you're in Teams. And essentially, this is going to have a synchronization between uh, these two applications. So you won't have to keep manually flipping backwards and forwards to access different contact information. It will also automatically be able to tidy up any duplicate contacts that it finds and other things like category labels will be maintained between Teams and Outlook so that all of that extra kind of user metadata that you can add to a contact also gets updated and synchronized between the two applications. Now, Microsoft is saying that this feature will be rolled out to all tenants by April 2025 and that it will be switched on by default in enterprises, but you'll only have access to this feature if you're using the new Teams client. So you need to be on that for this synchronization to happen. We had the first patch Tuesday of the month this week and it was a big one. There are quite a lot of zero day flaws fixed in it, probably the most notable one was a vulnerability that was being already uh, taken advantage of in the wild with Microsoft's hypervisor Hyper-V. So it's really important to get that out and to get that tested. There are a whole load of other vulnerabilities there, of course, which are also important to fix. But one problem has come up and that's for users using the Citrix session recording agent. Now, of course, this is going to maybe apply to a relatively small subset of users. But if you're using the latest version of that agent and it only seems to affect the latest version then you need to make sure that you stop the service before this update is applied and then you can restart the service so that is a workaround that Microsoft and Citrix have published at this point of course I'm assuming they will provide an update to the agent at some point so that this is no longer a problem for those particular users so while this is a little bit of a pain you're gonna to have to orchestrate that as you update your uh, rollouts if you have devices with the SRA installed on them it's no it's, there, are, there are much worse workarounds that they could have said that you're gonna to have to implement to get this going so it's a bit of a pain that it's relatively easy to automate uh, and you can get this sorted out and get that update applied to your devices of course I was joking at the beginning of the video we love more subscribers here I love being noticed on the street I have to go out in disguise now if you want to make this channel even more popular then I'd love it if you gave this video a like if you found the content here useful if you'd like to see these kind of weekly news updates from Petri.com then I'd really appreciate that and I'm going to leave you with another video on the screen where we talked about Microsoft's potential layoffs coming up uh, at some point in quarter one this year and I was thinking you know whether Microsoft was starting to see some of the return on investment for from their own use of AI internally maybe being a reason for the restructuring of their global workforce to get rid of underperforming employees but go and take a look at that video and let me know what you think but that's it from me for this week and I'll see you next time